perfect in love. Awesome in wonder, faithful and just. You can be trusted in all of your ways. We're singing now. in mercy, wisdom and strength. You can be trusted in all of your ways. We're singing now, oh.
check. Good morning. Amen. I think there's no better way to start the day than worshiping the Lord. Amen. So we're just going to continue to do that. Just continue to honor his presence, welcome him in. I don't know how you started your day when you got up. You might have yelled at your kids. You might have had a bad attitude, but Jesus can change all that, right? So we're here to worship. Uh, We're here to give him glory. So, Father God, we honor you. We thank you. You are worthy of our praise, and we focus all of our mind, all of our heart, all of our soul onto you this morning because you're worthy of it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's worship. Oh, there's never been anyone like you, never been anyone like you. You are worthy, you are worthy. There's never been anyone like you, never been anyone like you. You are worthy, you are worthy. There's never been anyone like you. Never been anyone like you. You are worthy. You are worthy. There's never been anyone like you. Never been anyone like you. You are worthy. You are worthy. Come on, sing that again. There's never. There's never been. Fix 
my eyes on Christ alone. My rock, my shield, my cornerstone. We sing, God is so good. Yes, you are. God is so
And with great anticipation, we await the promise to come. Everything that you have spoken will come to pass. Let it be. Let's just stay in just a posture for a moment of, of worship and receiving. Because, you know, when the rain from God comes, it washes. Right? It washes. It heals. It cleanses. It, it waters. Right? So if there's wounding in your heart this morning, can we just say, rain of God, would you come? If there's dry places in your heart, could we say, rain of God, would you come and water those dry places? Right, if there's like nastiness, back, spiritual bacteria, right, just stuff that's just killing you spiritually, can we say, rain of God, would you come and heal? Father, we invite your presence, again, it's here, <laughs> but God, we thank you for your presence. Father, we thank you that for the things that only you can do, the only God moments. Father, we posture ourselves. God, I pray that you would reign. Father, over every just dry area, not sin, not addiction necessarily, but just even the dry places, God. Father, we want to truly be lights in a dark world. We want to truly be people who just, uh, just exude the presence of God. So reign on us. Amen. Amen? It means God do it. I tell you, he is so good. Good morning. It's good to see you. Go ahead, find your seats. We're going to transition. And I have a feeling we're probably going to sing that again in a little bit. It's good to see you. Good morning. It's so good. Merry Christmas. Huh? Someone came in here and they said, hey, it looks really good in here. And I forgot, we, we did a lot of decorating this week. But doesn't it look pretty good, huh? It's just, it's just fun. It, feels, uh, it just feels good. And it's a great time to celebrate Jesus, the King of the world. Amen? And so if you're joining us from at home, we're glad you're here. Thanks for being with us 
online. It's been a little while, but if you're here in the audience, can we just welcome everyone that's at home online? Give them a hand. Let's just hoop and holler. We love you. It's funny, you run into people who we haven't seen physically since March, but you talk to them and they're like, yeah, we see you every Sunday. And so it's, uh, it's cool. And so we just, you're part of the family. Um, we're glad you're with us through a camera. That's pretty cool. Well, we're going to continue with our Christmas series. How many of you are just excited to celebrate Christmas this year? Right? I tell you, we need, I tell you, we need a reason just to celebrate Jesus, but man, we need a reason for Christmas, right, with everything we've gone through, so it's good. Uh, we're doing a series called For Unto Us. If you weren't here last week, um, I'm not going to say shame on you, but um, yeah, if you want to, listen to the message. It was all right. I thought um, it was good, but we're going we're gonna to continue our series. We said for unto us, and last week our title was called Full of Wonder, and I believe that God wants to reveal himself again to his people, and when he does, it's going to cause you to go, wow, God, you're amazing, yeah. right? So when we get a revelation of how amazing he is, we can't help but praise him. We can't help but worship. We can't help but give our lives to him. And so um, I'm believing in this season, with everything going on, that we would once again be in awe of how amazing our God is. I read one of my scriptures. My, probably my favorite one I read was uh, Habakkuk chapter 3. It said, Lord, I have heard of your fame. Lord, I stand in awe of your deeds. Lord, repeat them again in our day. Lord, make them known, and in wrath, remember mercy. And so my prayer for us is, yes, God is good. God has been good. God has done good things. And my prayer is, God, repeat them in our day. Do it again. Breathe life. Breathe hope. I'm not saying repeat what you did. It has to be the same. I'm saying, God, just invade us with your presence. So my question is, what are you contending for? What are you believing for? What are you asking God to spark again in your heart? So there's last week. Let's fast forward today. Uh, today, the title of my message is Father of Fathers. Father of Fathers, for unto us, Father of Fathers. You know, there's, there's something about kids. They love to brag about their dads. Right? I mean, maybe it's, you know, maybe it's just your kids. It's, there's something that's ingrained in the heart of a son or a daughter that just thinks their dad is really cool. And I'm so grateful as a father that I don't even have to do anything necessarily cool because my kids are young enough and they still think I'm cool. Right? My coolness factor might fade a little bit as they get older and once they can start to really see that maybe he's not as cool as he thinks he is. But right now, they think this guy is, is pretty cool. And there is something within their heart, in the heart of a kid, that just is like longing to look up to a father, longing to brag about dad. You know, I know, remember growing up, and I don't think my father's here. I have a great dad. He's amazing. He's worked hard for us. He served God. He led our family, and uh, he's not perfect. But I remember growing up thinking my dad was probably pretty perfect. Right? I remember thinking he is a hero. And probably what I didn't know is he had struggles that he was battling in his own heart. What I didn't know is he probably every day was waking up going, God, just give me a little bit of strength. Because he probably didn't feel like a, a hero. But in my eyes, um, he was my hero and is my hero. And so no matter how old you are, even if you're like 50-something, there is a longing in your heart. <laughs> or 60-something or 70-something. <laughs> But no matter how old you are, there is a longing in your heart that was put there by God to feel the love from a father figure and ultimately Father God. It was wired into us. You know, it's actually funny. You know, growing up, I was a, I actually was a pretty smart kid later, but I didn't start out that way. In fact, after, um, after kindergarten, the lines in the coloring page, they're really difficult. And so I wasn't ready for the first grade. And so back in the day in Enumclaw, they had a special program for the cool kids, of course. And it was called Pre-First. Yeah, you, you think they could at least come up with like a cooler name for kids that aren't ready for first grade. You know, let's just call it Pre-First. Why can't you call it like special first or, or something like that? So anyways, I was not ready for first grade. I went after kindergarten to pre-first. And I remember Mrs. Dodd in pre-first 
um, class, we were doing something on our dads, and I remember um, that, we, I don't remember what the project was, but I told her, and I drew a picture of my dad and his profession, and I told her that my dad was an astronaut. <laughs> and here's the thing, you guys, she believed me. In fact, she called her at conference, talked to my mom, and said something like, you know, I didn't know your husband was an astronaut. And my mom's like, yeah, no. Um, but anyways, there was something within me that just, um, and that teacher, God bless Mrs. Dodd, but um, there was something within my heart that just idolized this father figure, my dad, in my life. And so um, the title, Father of Fathers, our main scripture for this month is Isaiah chapter 9. I want to read it again. It's a prophecy about 740-ish years before Jesus, and it says, for unto us, a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, of the increase of his government and his peace, there will be no end. Come on, let's just, I'm going to read that one again. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. The kingdom of God will go forward. Amen? Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to order it, to establish it with judgment and justice from this time forward, even forever. The zeal of the Lord of the hosts will perform this. So yes, this is a prophecy about Jesus, but I think in order to really understand this, we need to understand what was going on in the culture of the day, okay? Because remember, this is like 700 and something years before, and so many of the uh, revelations of this word are going to happen for those people long after right, they're, they're buried and gone. Um, but there was a lot going on in their hearts, and we got to realize this, when God speaks, Back then, and when God speaks to us today, he always is going to address issues that are going on in our life right now, okay? So when we cry out to him, he's always going to answer, but God always speaks about the future. So he's not just saying, hey, I'm going to give you an answer for the thing that's in front of your life that you're struggling with, but I'm going to give you a glimpse of what I want to do in your future, okay? So this prophecy had some... Um, Real-time implications for the people of the day, but also it had some implications thousands of years later for you and for I, okay? So when God speaks, he's not just looking at the circumstance, he's looking at the vision that he has for your life. So some of the things might not make sense to them back then, but now we're seeing maybe a few more things make sense. But even in this prophecy, it doesn't all make sense to us because I believe there are, it's a shadow of things to come, Amen. So, context. Let's go back from the scripture, roughly 30 or 40 years, to what was happening when this prophecy took place. So, and I'm not going to geek out on you with history too much because I don't have time. So Israel was God's people. God brought them out of Egypt. God said, I have a future. I have a plan for you. And they wandered for a long time. They obeyed God, they served God, and then they didn't serve God, and they walked in disobedience, and they went around the same mountain, you know, like for years and years and years, and um, they, God said, this is how I'm going to do things, and they said, God, that's not good, we want a king, and they had to reap what they sowed, and so it was just a, a huge mess. So they had good kings and bad kings, and we all say we want good kings, um, and so they, the history is sort of filled with good ones, filled with bad ones. Uh, some good kings, King David, King Solomon, right? We like those guys. We preach about them. Um, right after King Solomon, the nation of Israel split into two, two nations, okay? You had to the north, you had the nation of Israel, and to the south, you had Judah, okay? So God's people said, hey, we're going to just kind of do two things here for a little bit, um, and at that time, king of Judah, the south, was a guy named Ahaz. And if you were to Wikipedia Ahaz today, you would see things like horrible, loser, <laughs> wicked, not competent, go back to pre-first, okay? So, so you have this guy, <laughs> you have this guy in the position of a king that is not adequate, that is not competent, that is a horrible leader. And he wasn't just wicked, because he was, and he did wickedness in the sight of God. In fact, other wicked leaders couldn't stand this guy because he was just a horrible leader, 
Do you get the picture of what I'm talking about? So he's just horrible. In fact, he was so bad that when he died, and the custom was to be buried on your uh, family's land, and he came from a lineage of kings, they buried him on the property, but they didn't bury him with the other kings because, like, he was just that bad. You get the picture of how, how we're talking? So uh, let's go back a couple uh, verses in Isaiah chapter 7. It says, When Ahaz, son of Jotham, son of Uzziah, was king of Judah, King Rezin of Aram, and King Pekah, son of Remaliah, who was the king of Israel, marched up to fight against Jerusalem, but they could not overpower it. Now the house of David was told, Aram has allied itself with Ephraim. So the hearts of Ahaz and his people were shaken as the trees of the forest were shaken by the wind. Okay, so we've got uh, King Ahaz, horrible king. We've got these two other kings from Israel and Samaria. And pretty much they are gathering together, joining their forces to attack King Ahaz. Okay, they're outnumbering the king. You get the picture? So Rezin, Syria, and Pekah, Israel, teamed up, and their goal was to overthrow Ahaz and Judah. Pause for a minute. Can I just say that when there is a battle that is raging in your life, God is always speaking. God always wants to bring you a word in the midst of your battle. And I think it's so important that when we go through the things we go through, that we not just look to get out of the mess we're in, but we look to what the word of the Lord is to be to us for that time. Okay, back to the scripture. So, like I said, there's always a word of the Lord. So this is going on in Ahaz, the horrible king's life. And in the middle of that, Isaiah the prophet comes to him. And Isaiah was a prophet who spoke what God had, and he lived in Jerusalem, which is in the southern part, and that's where he really ministered to. And so he comes to King Ahaz and says, I have a word from God in the middle of what's going on. And he says this, it will not take place, and he's referring to them attacking, okay, them overpowering. It will not happen, for the head of Aram is Damascus. The head of Damascus is only resin. With 65 years, Ephraim will be too shattered to be a people. The head of Ephraim is Samaria, and the head of Samaria is Remaliah's son. Last part says, if you do not stand firm in your faith, you will not stand at all. Okay, so lots of words, lots of names. We're not going to really go there right now. But pretty much, he comes in the middle of some horrible news, and he says, the enemy's plans against you will not prevail. They will try. They will not succeed. But if you do not stand in faith, meaning if you do not fight this battle God's way, you will fall. Okay, pr pretty clear. Let's continue. King Ahaz hears that, and being the pre-first dropout that he was, does not hear the prophet, does not accept the word, and he goes, you know, I've got an idea. He goes, and he offers his nation to another king. He goes to another king. This guy's name is, uh, we'll just call him Popol, okay? He goes to King Popol, who was the king of Assyria, not Syria, Assyria. He goes to Popol, and he says, hey, king, would you come and would you pretty much be my father? Would you pretty much, I'm scared they're going to overpower me. God, I know God just answered and said he'd protect me, but I reject that, but I'm looking to you to be my source. So he goes to this king on his own, doesn't hear the word of the Lord. And we see this, we have to go back a little bit in 2 Kings chapter 16. It says, so Ahaz sent messengers to tiglath Pileser, that's Popol, of Assyria, saying, I am your servant and your son. Do you remember what the word of the Lord was? Everlasting father. So when you go to someone and say, I'm your son, you're pretty much saying, and you are my father. But the word of the Lord already came to him and said, I am your everlasting father. Hmm. 
So he goes on and he says, come up and rescue me from the hand of the king and from the hand of the king of Israel who's attacking me. So instead of receiving God as the everlasting father, he goes to an earthly king and he says, basically, you're my dad. Everything I am, I owe to you. All of my assets, all of my people, my nation is at your beckons call. We are yours. Pretty scary, especially when the word of the Lord already told him, we will be, right? I will be your God. One of the names of God is Everlasting Father. And I think we need to understand the role of a father back then because it's so important today, right? But back then, the role of a father had some amazing implications so when King Ahaz is going to this other King Polpol, basically saying, you are my father, he is saying at least four things. Because if we look at the role of a father in the Old Testament, we see that a father did many things, and I just want to talk about four of them. But number one, and I think these things translate over to our God, right, our everlasting father. Number one, a father pardons. So when a king would go to another king and say, we're in trouble, we need you, that king, any debt that that nation owed the new king is now absorbed. Why? Because he now is in control of the nation. So it doesn't matter if I owed you a couple pieces of silver, right? Now, since we gave you our nation, we are yours. He pardons the debt. He absorbs the debt. But here's the beautiful thing. Our God doesn't just absorb our sin. Because if you think about the word absorb, it means to take over, to adopt. Think about it. When you are pardoning, when you are absorbing someone's debt, you are basically adopting it as your own. A father pardons because at the heart of a father is a heart to adopt, to make it as his own. Is that good? Think about it for a minute. Our God did not just pardon us. Our God pardoned us because he wanted to adopt us, to make us his, because that's what a father does. In Romans 8, it says, for those who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. The Spirit you received does not make you a slave so that you live in fear. Rather, the Spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship. And by that, we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. If we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his sufferings in order that we may also share in his glory. Listen, what this king did for Ahaz is he said, I know you're a horrible king, but now I'm adopting you and your nation, and now you are mine, and that is exactly what Father God has done for us. We receive an inheritance because of him. We receive a hope because of him. We receive promises because of him. The things that we deserve, we don't get because of Jesus. A father pardons because a father wants to adopt. Number two that we see in the Old Testament story, a father provides. Listen, our everlasting Father will never run out of resources to provide for your needs. Physically, emotionally, spiritually, our God is the God who not only owns the hills, but he owns the cattle on the hills. So my question is, in this season of life that you're in, what type of provision 
do you need from our everlasting Father? Because that the nature of a father is a person that wants to provide for his sons and his daughters. Listen, in those days, people were stressed out, anticipating all sorts of things to come. And in the middle of it came this word that said, I will be your provision. You don't need to worry. Can I say in this season that we find ourselves in, because of our everlasting Father, you do not need to worry about your tomorrows because our God will take care of your emotional, your physical, and your spiritual needs. Number three, a father protects. A father protects. So I have great history on both sides of my family. Um, both of my mom's parents are still alive. They're like 96. They're amazing. I haven't seen them since like March, but they're amazing. I talked to them. Um, my grandfather came from Sicily to Chicago, and in Chicago, his family owned a candy store. I don't know if it was a candy store or not. Um, it was a candy store. And in those days... Um, there was some mafia, and I believe it was called the Black Hand, and they went to my great-grandfather, Grandpa Vito, and they pretty much said, hey, there's a lot of crime going on. We will offer our services to you if you give us a cut, right? Much like what was going on in our story with Ahaz, right? And my great-grandfather pretty much said, hey, you know, thanks, Guido, or whatever your name was, but we are good. We can pretty much take care of ourselves. And it's actually really cool because my grandfather went out and bought like a Colt 45 pickup, or not pickup, <laughs> pistol. He went out and got a Colt 45 pistol to protect his family, and that gun is still in my family to this day. My, it's at my dad's house in our, in our safe, right? Because he went out and he said, hey, I don't need your protection because I've got my protection, and his name is Mr. Colt 45. And so we are good, thank you, but no thank you. But I think we need to understand that the, one of the roles of a father is that he protects those who are his children. First Peter says, the inheritance is kept in heaven for you who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In all of this you rejoice, though now for a little while you had to suffer grief in all kinds of troubles. Can I just say in this season of heightened fear, in this season of heightened of things being unknown, we do not need to worry about our tomorrows. We do not need to worry about sickness. We do not need to worry about disease. We do not need to worry about sword. We do not need to worry about peril. Listen, the word of God says our God is our everlasting father, and so a good father protects those. And so I'm not saying be unwise, be wise, but we need to start calling on God to be our protection because that is who he is. And can I say, the enemy of God's plan for your life is fear. Listen, do not buy in in this season to the narrative of fear that is trying to be very loud in this season because God's plan is protection. Number four, I'm going to have our worship team come back. A father pardons. Father protects. A father provides. And lastly, a father praises. I'm not saying that we need to say, God, you need to worship us. But a father desires to praise his kids. Why? Because they're his, because he takes pride in his children. So a king back in the day would take land and when he would acquire that land, he would talk about that land. And he was no longer just king of Israel or king of Judah. He is now king of Israel, Judah, in this new land, right? It would, it would be, if it was a disgrace before the king would take it, he would change it around so it would no longer be a disgrace. Listen, when I was 13 years old, I was at a winterish camp at the Galilean Resort in Ocean Shores, Washington. And for the very first time, I was like 13, I was asked to ask God, do you love me? Close my eyes, God, do you love me? And I was never the same again when I heard the affirmation 
from our Heavenly Father. Because when fathers speak, sons and daughters change. In the natural, dads, it is so important that you not just critique your sons and daughters, I'm preaching to the choir, but that you praise them. Because they are longing to hear those words. You were designed to feel love, affirmation, and acceptance from Father God. Allow him, whatever you're going through, to speak over you. You can jot down Zephaniah 317. Listen, would you stand up with me? Come on, we have a Father God, an everlasting Father that desires to speak life over his children, desires to praise you because you are fearfully, you are wonderfully made. You might not do everything right, but he will love you with an everlasting love that will not change. So in this Christmas season, may you be reminded of this little baby whose name is Everlasting Father. And would you this season allow him to adopt you, allow him to say you're forgiven, allow him to provide for your needs, to protect you, and listen to his words that he would speak over your life. Let's pray together. Father, thank you. Father, thank you that you are our everlasting Father. Father, I pray that that revelation would come alive in our hearts today. Father, that we wouldn't look to man-made fathers or we wouldn't look to man-made substances or things to fulfill the role that only you can fulfill in us. Father, let us not be like King Ahaz that heard the word of the Lord and still turned to man for all of those things. Father, would you fulfill your children today? Father, would you just fill us up with your presence? Father, would you speak words of life over us? Father, would you provide for every emotional, spiritual, and physical need that exists in this room? Father, every area of disappointment, Come on, let's just respond to the Lord for a minute. Every area of disappointment, God, I ask that you would heal. Father, every area where things didn't go how we thought they would, Father, would you provide a word to sustain us? Father, would you heal our disappointment today? Father, every area where we are looking for protection outside of you, Father, would you reassure us that you are our source? Father, I pray for someone maybe that doesn't know you. Father, that they would just hear and feel your presence speaking to them. Father, would you speak words to us to sustain us this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, let's sing out. We receive your We receive your rain. Oh, we receive. We receive your rain. So, Lord, we receive your rain. Oh, like a flood.
with great anticipation we await the promise to come everything that you have spoken will come to pass let it be so nice just to sit in the presence of the Lord sometimes. And I just want to encourage you. I want to encourage you watching online this morning. Those of you that you feel in your spirit, you feel in your heart like that's the Father that you want. That's the Spirit of God reaching out to you and saying, this is who I really am. And I just want to encourage you this morning that God is not the everlasting Father to some people and then the evil taskmaster to others. You know what I'm saying? Those of you who just live in the fear that God is angry with you, that you can't give yourself over to him, you always feel like a failure. The word of God over you this morning is, I love you. I'm pleased with you. You are my son. You are my daughter. Come home. So if you just feel that in your spirit today, that's the father, the everlasting father calling you back to his heart. So just receive that love. Let the shame go. Let the regret go. Let your false conception of who God really is, just let it go. And let the true word of the Lord just fill your heart and your spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. I just pray that over you if you're in this room today, if you're watching us online today, and would the everlasting Father, would his unconditional love just pour over you and heal you from the inside out in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So good. You can go ahead and take a seat. I just have a few fun announcements to give um, before we all leave this morning. But number one, uh, if you're here and you're new to our family, if you're watching online, new to our family, just want to remind you that you can connect with us. Everything is on our website, genhope.org. There's a connect card virtually that you can fill out to make sure that you uh, receive our emails and our correspondence and there's an app that you can download on the app store and uh, we just we would love to connect with you so stay connected with us through that website Um, but a couple of really fun things coming up in this Christmas season Merry Christmas it's here right right so we have uh, we are going to be having a Christmas Eve candlelight service here on December 24th Christmas Eve at 5 p.m. and we are super excited to do that Um, It will be a family service, so all of the kids will be in the service with us. There will not be childcare. We're staying together because we love the combination of Jesus and little kids playing with fire. Because, uh, just kidding. We'll have like some glow sticks for the little, little ones um, because cleaning candle wax out of seats and carpet is like no fun at all afterwards. We are doing Christmas Eve, but here is the thing. We are asking, and I'm speaking specifically to the procrastinators in the room that won't make your decision until like two hours before the service. We'll still let you in the door, but seriously, we want people to RSVP for this service on our website. And the reason for that is we just want to prepare 
uh, for the number of people that we have. Uh, we want to be prepared whether we have 50 people here or all of a sudden 300 people show up. We just want to know, uh, have a, a, a semi-accurate head count so we can prepare in advance for what we need to do to make sure everybody has space. So please, if you're planning on coming to the Christmas Eve service, if you're planning on inviting friends and family, please have everyone go online RSVP for that so we can get an accurate head count. And then uh, on the 27th after Christmas, we are having a service all online call it, and we're calling it Church at Home. So it's just going to be all online. There will actually be no in-person service here at the church on the 27th. It's just a great way to everybody, for everybody, uh, especially on our staff and our volunteer teams, just to have that Christmas weekend um, off. And so we're not doing a live service here, but we will be hosting a service online on the 27th. So be sure to hop on. Uh, our YouTube channel, our Facebook at 9 a.m. on the 27th, and we'll be there doing a family service together. And we just love you guys. Thank you for your faithfulness and your giving. Just want to remind you that if you're here this morning, you have um, a check to drop off. You can drop that off in the black box in the back. Otherwise, we have our giving online. So thank you for blessing us. Thank you for blessing the kingdom with your giving. Thank you for your faithfulness. And I just pray that this week you feel and you hear the voice of the everlasting Father in your heart. In Jesus' name, amen. Love you all. Bless you all. See you next time.